Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. What you're listening to and what I'm reviewing today is the Buyer Dynamic MC930. This is a $600 small diaphragm condenser microphone. Full disclosure, this was sent to me by Buyer Dynamic for the sake of making this review. I'll list all recording information and settings in the doobly-doo and the description down below, and I'll of course not be doing any kind of post-processing to the audio. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You're going to get a zippered storage bag. You'll of course get the microphone, a microphone clip, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a bit of documentation including measurements of your specific microphone, and you'll get some stickers. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels extremely well put together. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill with very minimal give to it. On the side you have two switches, one for a high pass filter, another for a minus 15 dB pad. There is nothing else on the sides of the microphone. On the rear of the mic you'll find the XLR port. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Germany. And then as far as the specs, I will list all of them in the description down below, and I will have them up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look at them. Now I am spinning around the MC930 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. I know that I'm going to regret doing this, but now let's test the plosive rejection. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about 6 inches away from the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about 1 foot away from the MC930. Now I'm about 2 feet away from the microphone and here is how it sounds. And finally I'm about 4 feet away from the MC930 and here is how it sounds. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, I am now typing on the sad W and the spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds 7 inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds 7 inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated space. Next, to try the microphone in a few different positions, here is how it sounds 10 inches away from my mouth being underboomed in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds being underboomed 10 inches away in an untreated space. And here is how the microphone sounds being overhead boomed 10 inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds being overhead boomed 10 inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Next, I want to see how effective the microphone and the provided mount are at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. It is also undeniable that I'm annoying, so I am going to tap on the body of the mic to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Again, I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect with the high pass filter turned off and here is how it's sounding. And now I have turned on the high pass filter which is 6 dB per octave at 250 Hertz and here is how that compares. Should clean up quite a bit of that proximity effect mud. Next, I just want to see how the pad on the mic is engaged so I'll switch it on while I hum. Ah. Uh... Uh, there doesn't seem to be any kind of gradual attenuation when you engage the pad, and when you disengage the pad, it is not a gradual removal of the attenuation, but it does seem to be delayed. 
Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that I'm reviewing and a handful of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear it in the context of the marketplace. Marketplace. Why can't I say marketplace? There I go. I said it. Starting on the MC930, 6 inches away, gain set at 2 o'clock, no pad and no high pass filter, and here is how it sounds. First up is the Rode M5. These are $200 for a pair. I am 6 inches off, my gain is still set at 2 o'clock, and here is how it sounds compared to a microphone that is 6 times the price. Let's go back and do a bunch more. Back again on the MC930, absolutely nothing has changed, and let's go to another mic. Now I am on the Bayer Dynamic TGI-53. This goes for about $130, still 6 inches off, gain still set at 2 o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, and let's go back to the MC930. Back for another palate cleanser, this is the MC930, nothing has changed, let it clear out your ear holes, and let's go to another microphone. Now I am on the SE Electronics SE8, no pad and no filter, these go for about $260 each, 6 inches off, gain still set at 2 o'clock, and here is how it compares. Let's go back and do some more. We have a couple more to go, but first off, here is another palate cleanser, MC930, nothing has changed. Next mic. Next, I am on the Shure SM81 in the neutral setting. This costs around $400 each, 6 inches off, gain boosted to around 4 o'clock, and here is how this compares to the MC930, which is $200 more expensive. Let's go back and do some more. We are now at the penultimate microphone, so here is your penultimate palate cleanser. Let's go to the second to last mic. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, KM184. These are $900 each or $1,600 for a pair. Six inches off, gain dropped back down to two o'clock. And here is how this compares to a microphone that is about $300 less expensive. Let's go back and do one final comparison. You all know what the final microphone is going to be, so here is the MC930. Get a good feel for it, and let's jump to the last mic. And the final microphone is the Neumann. Hello, Neumann! U87AI. This goes for about $3,700. Cardioid polar pattern. No pad. No filter. Six inches off. Gain set at 12 o'clock. There you go. This is your control from video to video. It is not a fair comparison. It's a control. Let's go to the music test. If you let me go to Earth, I swear that I'd fit in I'd keep our secrets safe So that nobody would know that I'm there to wipe them out And take our planet back Wait, is this being recorded? Did I just say that out loud? (laughs) I'm an idiot. Somebody take my channel away. I do not deserve any of this. I don't deserve it. Take it away. Is anybody there? Nope, nobody came to take the channel away, so I'm going to continue. The MC930 is certainly not an inexpensive microphone, but for the price tag that you're paying, what you're getting is a really nice sounding mic. And first up as far as pros is the off-axis coloration. I found it to be inoffensive all the way around the microphone, so if you're recording in an environment where you have a lot of sound making it into the sides or the rear of the mic, that isn't going to ruin the recording. I also found the high pass filter to be very usable. It is around 250 hertz, but because it's 6 dB per octave, it doesn't come across overly aggressive. It doesn't make the microphone sound overly weak or anemic. And when we get to the mids, treble, and air frequencies, we 
we do have a slight boost of about 2 dB, but compared to a lot of other microphones, those frequencies come across relatively neutral. And then as far as cons, this is a small diaphragm condenser, and I point this out in pretty much every SDC video. It is terrible with plosives, it is terrible with wind, so you need to be extremely careful, and if possible, use wind protection and or a pop filter. On the note of wind protection, I would love if they included some kind of foam wind protection in the box to assist with that because right out of the box, if you're using this in a windy environment, if you are using this for vocals, it is going to pick them up. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the MC930? As far as the overall character, it has a very thick bottom end in the base, the upper base, and the low mids, especially if you engage that proximity effect, a high pass filter is going to be your friend. Then you get a relatively neutral midsection. It does come across slightly more present. It is going to be more prominent because you don't have that typical super boosted high end that we hear on a lot of modern microphones. And talking about the high end, you do get a slight elevation of about 2 dB, which exaggerates a bit of the detail and articulation, but it doesn't come across over boosted or unnatural. It is a really nice upper frequency lift. On the electric guitar, I enjoyed it, but compared to the microphones that people typically use for that application, the low mids are a bit heavy, and it also doesn't come across super exciting or aggressive because it doesn't have any kind of 5 dB boosts. On the acoustic guitar, again, the low mids come across quite heavy. I think it does benefit greatly from a high pass filter. I ended up wanting to cut around 190 hertz, but once you do that, you get this really nice and even and balanced and natural sound. But due to that slight boost in the treble and air frequencies, you're also getting some really nice articulation and detail. For singing and spoken word vocals, I don't think this microphone was made for those applications, but I think it can work nicely, especially if you're looking for a relatively neutral mid, treble, and air frequency range that doesn't sound over boosted, as well as a thick lower frequency range in the upper bass and low mids. So to wrap up, would I recommend the Bayer Dynamic MC930? Yeah. I thought it sounded fantastic on every sound source I tried it on. I like the weight in the upper bass and low mids. I like the slight boost in the treble and air frequencies. It gives a bit of lift, it gives a bit of life, but it's not over boosted. However, I also thought that the SE8 and the SM81 sounded fantastic. I thought they offered a similar sound profile and they are a bit cheaper than the MC930. So if you're trying to stay on budget and keep your costs low, I would recommend looking around at the MC930's competitors because there are some great alternatives out there that offer you a similar sound profile. But if you prefer the sound of the MC930 over the other SDCs that are available, I say go for it because I see no deal breakers with this thing. All right, that's all that I've got for you today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go to give me a thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down, watch the video beneath me, thank these people over here, thank you. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, boop.